Hi and welcome to this video where I've recently purchased a Ford Focus that was abandoned for two years and obviously the battery is going to be completely flat which it was and on testing I got a voltage of about one volt so pretty much dead. So in this video I'm going to show how to replace the battery because it's quite awkward it's not as simple as you just think of whip the battery out whip it in because you've actually got to remove the air filter housing as well. So I'm going to show how to do that and then at the end of the video I'm also going to see if I can bring this battery back to life. So watch that space. Um, so yeah hopefully this video will be of use to you and if it is I appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to my channel and many thanks for watching. So before proceeding do you know your radio code? So starting with the basics because I actually struggle to open this bonnet. So on this Ford, you need to insert the key, turn it first to the left, and then try and just hook it open a slight amount, and then turn it to the right to fully open it. And then the bonnet stay is there on the left. Okay, so I'll just give some photos now just of what's underneath the bonnet, so we can see the battery cover there, the air filter housing, there's the airflow sensor wiring, the relay box, the coolant expansion bottle, the power steering reservoir, the oil filler cap, the oil level dipstick, and the HD coil and leads. So okay, we're crack on now. And um, what I'll do is I'll just take a voltage reading of the current battery. So this is the battery that was originally in the car when it was abandoned. Now I'm going to use the laser tool here, which actually requires an external battery power source or a decent car battery to operate. And we just see what this says for the voltage. So we just remove the little plastic cover there. And what do we have? 0.8 volts. So according to that, it's 0.8 volts, less than one volt. So I'm just going to double check that now with a standard fluke electrical meter just to see what this actually gives me see if it confirms that and we've got 0.94 volts so we're definitely under one volt so first thing to do is remove the air filter assembly so the first thing to do is just unclip this red locking latch and remove the mass airflow sensor plug off the air filter housing. So we just pop that off, pop it to one side. We then need to remove the air duct that goes from the air filter housing to the um, throttle body. So we've just done that. I'll put the tool link in the description like I normally do. Okay, so that's that disconnected. Now we've also got a pipe now just below that, it's a bit awkward to see, I'll try and get the camera in there. So this is the crankcase ventilation hose and for this we just squeeze the plastic tabs together and that should just pop off, quite awkward there. I'll just try and show you the end of this hose so you've got a better idea of what you've actually got to squeeze together. So there it is, it just squeezes together like that. I'll just now tuck that back in there. Okay, and then we've got a little rubber ring here. We've just got to remove this. It's like a retaining ring. I should put that somewhere safe, not where I put it, because I'm gonna lose that later on in the video. And then it's a case of just pull the air filter housing up and out the way. Now that's on this model, there may be other connections on different models, but on this particular Ford Focus, that's all I need to do to remove the air filter housing. So it should just come up, bit of wiggling around, there we go. You just gotta put it off the studs that are underneath. So there we can have a quick look around everything. Now I noticed as I actually turned mine upside down, a little bit of oil started to dribble out of where that breather hose goes. 
There it is, a bit of oil there. So it might be worth just checking inside the filter housing, make sure you haven't got oil in there or something, some other contamination. Anyway, so with that removed, we'll have a quick photo just to show what the parts are that we can actually see. So there's all the little bits there and those two grommets. So now on to removing the battery. So for this we need a 10 millimeter spanner and it's actually quite tight under there. So I'm using a ratchet spanner and it's actually got a flexible head, just makes life a little bit easier. So remove the negative first. That way if you short the spanner out against the body, it's not gonna make any difference. Whereas if you started with the positive and then shorted it against the car, you're gonna short the battery out. And then again, it's a 10 millimeter socket now, deep socket for the battery clamp. So it's a nut on one side and then a nut on the other side. Again, I should put the nuts and stuff in a magnetic tray so you don't actually lose them. For some reason, I, I seem to struggle to learn this. I spend most of my time trying to find the parts that I've knocked on the floor or inside the engine bay. So anyway, so we've got the negative off now. There we go. And so now we can safely disconnect the positive. You might be worth actually putting a plastic cap on the negative terminal just to make sure it doesn't jump back on there and short out. So, because actually I found that actually happened, the wire pushed it back. There, so now we've got a little cover here to remove. It sort of unclips. You do need to remove the wires off that cover. Now watch as I actually knock the rubber retaining ring on the floor. Here we go. The plastic cover catches it, throws it on the floor. Well, if only it was on the floor, it's now actually in the engine bay. So we'll have to find that later on. So we're going back to the other side, 10 millimeter socket for that. And then we just need to lift the bracket up slightly because it sort of hooks in at one end. There is a little hook on that. And so now the battery is free to be removed. So just bear in mind these are quite heavy and if you're leaning over forwards, you don't want to be straining your back if you can avoid it. And there we are. So this is a platinum, it's just a budget battery. We'll get that to one side. So now to refit the battery. So I'm actually using the original battery just to demonstrate this. So obviously you wouldn't normally put a new one in. But I'm going to try and see if I can bring this battery back to life. So I'm not sure whether I can yet. But anyway, so it's worth cleaning the terminals um, with one of those wire sort of brush tools there. I'll put a link to that again in the video description. So that just gives it a good old clean. Get sort of any oxidation or corrosion there that could sort of affect the connection. Now I'm putting a negative cover on there because it's easy for this to connect up again. And then again on the actual clamp itself, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean out with one of these sort of like deburring tools. So that just cleans it, but it's conical, so I had to go in from underneath on that. Um, they're not actually straight. So for this, we connect the positive first. Now, one of the things I've actually forgotten to do here is put the plastic side cover on. because so I've got all carried away with the fact that positive has to go on first. Like I say, this is all very awkward in the Ford. So I'm just doing the negative now. It's all tucked away there. Right, so that's now reconnected. We'll just tighten that negative up now with a 10 millimeter spanner. And then the penny drops that I hadn't put the cover on. But the clamp actually has to go on before that side cover. And like I say, Ford have made this almost as awkward as possible. Because you can't get to this 
nuts here on that side covers on. So we'll tighten that up now. Just get that clamp in position. Make sure you don't pinch the negative lead when you actually clamp that down. So now I've got to remove the positive again to get this side plate in. Yeah. It's got to come back off again. Okay, so let's tuck that in there. As you can see, it covers the right hand side of the clamp. So I suppose that prevents corrosion or water getting onto the clamp, I suppose. But there we go. So now we can clip all these cables to the front of that, put our positive back on. So the thing is, because it's supposed to be positive connected first, but you can't put the positive on until you put the side cover on, but then the side cover can't go on until you put the clamp on, it's all a bit, a little bit sort of awkward. But anyway, it's all back on now. So now time to refit the air filter assembly. So what it might be worth doing before you actually fit this is perhaps put a little bit of silicon grease just on those grommet areas, just to make installing and removing in the future a bit easier. I think it's just two of these sort of like dowels there. So before popping that back in, I'm just going to check because obviously there is a couple of cables down there, which is near that grommet, near one of the grommets. I'm just trying to get the orientation right there in my head. So that's the way it's going to go. So if we just take a look down here, so that cable there, I'm not sure that's supposed to be in that position. I think it should be the other side of the grommet. So I'm just going to bring that back on the other side. There's such a risk of actually getting that cable pinched by the air filter when I put it back in. All those nuts look quite rusty. I probably should have removed all of them and just cleaned them all up to make sure the earths had better connections, but we'll ignore that for the moment. So we'll just get this filter back in there. Try and get the intake scoop on there. Okay then, so just gonna put the breather hose back on. So that just pushes in. There we go, that's back in. And then we go back to the pipe. These can be quite awkward to pop on. And that was a few attempts on that. So that's back in there. We can clip our airflow sensor back in and lock it with the red tag. So everything's on apart from the rubber ring. I actually then had to try and find that rubber ring. So the cover's on there. So we found the rubber ring in the end, buried inside the engine, so that was another quarter of an hour lost. And then that just hooks back on there, like so. Okay then, so that should all be back together now. Then we can shut the bonnet. Like so. Okay then, so can you bring the dead battery back to life? So we just remind ourselves it had 0.94 volts. So what I'm going to do here is just connect in parallel a fully charged battery. So the idea here is this will actually put some power back into that dead battery and try and lift it up past the 1 volts because at one volt there's no, my charge was definitely not going to entertain trying to charge that back up. So we do that. So then I left that for a while. So we'll just see what the voltage is on the, on the second battery. 
So we've got 12.76 volts that should be passing into that dead battery. So I've left that on there for a while, for a few hours. Uh, might have been overnight actually, I can't remember now. But let's say overnight and we've now got 12.4 volts and the amp hour rating is now 216. So we're, we're sort of getting there. So what I did was I kept sort of pursuing this sequence. So then I'd start putting a charger on now just to keep that second battery topped up. Because obviously if I put the charger onto the other one, it's gonna cause it quite a bit of strain there. So I kept the second battery fully charged all the time and just kept alternating between trying to boost it with the battery and then topping it back up. So if we now have a look and see what we've got. Like I say, this is after a few days now. So that's just come off charge. So its voltage is going to be higher than what would be expected at 13 volts. And ironically, our amp hours is slightly lower at 197. But once that actually settled down, it was about 216 amp hours. So it's still not got much of a capacity to it. But anyway, we'll pop it back into the car. Because I would like to know actually whether it can start the car or not. So we'll reconnect that. Obviously, it probably wouldn't last long if it does start the car. It's 200 amp hours. It's a pretty low capacity. Okay then, let's get the keys. So this is a cold, frosty morning. The car's all iced up. And the engine is not being warmed. There it goes. It's... It started the car. So I would say that was success, really, because that battery is over two years old, only had one volts in it, and we have got it to start the car again. So I think that's pretty good going. May not last long, but... Anyway, so the torque settings um, for the battery are probably around five newton meters but unfortunately the Haynes manual doesn't actually give that figure so on to reference photographs so here we've got the battery cover the air filter housing the airflow sensor the fuse and relay box the coolant expansion bottle power steering reservoir oil filler cap oil level dipstick and the HD coil and leads. And there's the photo showing without the air filter housing. So you've been watching how to replace the battery in a Ford Focus Mark II with the 1.6 Ti petrol engine. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in February 2023. And I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.